delighted to uh, try and answer as many of your questions uh, as they can. So um, today um, we are I'm delighted to say that we've got some fantastic uh, guests. We've got Jennifer Paul, a registered dietitian from the Physicians Committee, who's going to talk about what to eat when you're dining out and how to spot healthy foods. Karen Smith, um, another dietitian from the Physicians Committee, will be rejoining us to talk about complete nutrition, um, the, the protein and B12 question that uh, vegans often get asked. Uh, we have uh, Hannah Kaliova, um, from the Physicians Committee, who will be talking about foods to boost your metabolism. And we have uh, another uh, fantastic international panel where we'll, we will be discussing eating out and uh, an international cuisine. So uh, let's go uh, first of all to uh, Jennifer Paul. As I mentioned, she's a re registered dietitian with the Physicians Committee. She has a master's in public health and she's going to talk about uh, eating out. So Jennifer, over to you. Thank you so much, Josh. Um, let me share my screen. All right, can you see that okay? Looks good. All right. Um, so hi everyone, I'm Jennifer and I'm a registered dietitian. And I'm just so thrilled to be part of this amazing program. So happy to see so many people on here today. Um, congratulations to everyone for committing to eating a healthy diet and joining this program every week. So today we're going to talk about plant-based options while traveling and dining out. I know it's definitely easier to stick to a healthy diet when you're at home and you can make home-cooked meals where you get to control all of the ingredients, um, but that's not always the case, right? Sometimes we are traveling, sometimes we don't have time to cook. And sometimes we just want to dine out or order in. So um, I wanna start with a quick poll. As you guys are transitioning to eating healthy meals, I wanna know, are you concerned about finding vegan meals at restaurants? And if you are, let us know what your concerns are in the chat box. Um, and hopefully I will be able to address some of these concerns. Um, if not, um, hopefully we can get to some of it in our panel discussion. All right, I'm gonna close the poll in a few seconds. All right, so three fourths of you seem to be worried. Um, I'm seeing Lots of comments in the chat about looking for added oils, trying to find vegan options, um, finding foods that are not too spicy, um, looking for the ingredients. Yes, so hopefully we'll, we'll be able to cover most of this. All right, so here are some options. Our first option here is a sandwich or a sub shop where Basically, as long as the bread is vegan, you can get a vegan sandwich or a veggie sandwich. And soups and salads are pretty common here. Um, so you can always look for plant-based options there. One example um, that's worldwide is Subway. Lots of different breads are vegan. There's also wraps and you can make a sandwich or wrap loaded with tons of veggies. And you can still add condiments like mustard and barbecue sauce, buffalo sauce, um, red wine vinegar, things like that. And like I mentioned, the soup Subway has a black bean soup and Mediterranean veggie soup you can have. Um, another example is Panera. So we got that soup sandwich and salad theme going on here. You can get a 10 vegetable soup, a Mediterranean veggie sandwich, as long as you hold the cheese and a strawberry poppy seed salad. I hope that sounds good to you guys. And another thing Panera has is breakfast options. So you can get oatmeal with fruit and you can get whole grain bagels. So bagels and oatmeal are a great thing to look for when you're looking for breakfast. And a bonus if they have something like hummus and you can make a veggie hummus bagel sandwich. A second option to look for is pizza. When I first went vegan, I thought I have to give up pizza, but no, this is a favorite for everyone, vegans included. Here's how to do it. Check if the dough is vegan, and then you just order a veggie pizza without the cheese. It's as simple as that. 
A great example is Papa John's, right? So you can order your pizza with marinara sauce, leave off the cheese, and then load it up on the veggies and herbs, right? You could try something like pineapple and jalapeno or spinach and mushroom, um, basil with tomatoes, onions, and peppers, right? There's so many different combinations. If you've had veggie pizza before, let us know in the chat box what your favorite combination is. And if you're at a restaurant and you don't wanna have a complicated order where you're you know, creating this on your own, if they have a preset veggie pizza, maybe it's a garden pizza, just order that without the cheese and it's super simple. Um, one thing my family does when we order pizza for delivery or takeout um, to enjoy at home, we add some nutritional yeast on top when we get it um, to give it a little extra cheesy flavor. And you'll also find um, pizza is very common. At, I'm sorry, pasta is very common at pizzerias. Um, definitely look for that and you can get that with marinara sauce and veggies as well. All right, we have Mexican cuisine or Tex-Mex. So rice and beans are a go-to for this type of restaurant. Um, sometimes you can find flavored rice. And I'll just mention that you might wanna check if the beans are made with lard. Um, sometimes that will be in there. But if it's not, you can make a very tasty meal with rice and beans and some vegetables like veggie fajitas. Maybe it's bell peppers and onions, right? And you can do this in a salad. You can make a bowl, you can make a burrito, you can have some tacos and then fill up on all of the yummy toppings they have that are plant-based like salsas, pico de gallo, salsa verde. You can get guacamole, different types of peppers, cilantro, lime, lettuce, right? There's so many things. And then now a lot of restaurants are expanding their options and you'll find things like cauliflower tacos and things like that. Chipotle is a great example here. They actually have a preset, two preset vegan bowls that you can order, but you can always build your own um, bowl, burrito, taco, or salad. They have cilantro, lime, rice, um, brown and white. They have two different beans, pinto and black. They have vegetables, they have salsas, roasted corn, guacamole and lettuce. And I also just recently found out they have a new plant-based chorizo option. Although I think that's only available in the US at the moment. Um, and they also have a sofritos too, which is tofu. Um, Chinese, Thai, and Vietnamese can be a good option as well. Um, you can always make your own meal with rice and tofu and some steamed vegetables on the side. Um, and always ask them if they can flavor it, right? Maybe they can add some soy sauce and chili pepper flakes, different things like that. Or you can get a menu item, maybe some noodles with vegetables, a uh, vegetable stir fry without the egg. And there's tons of curries here as well. And you can do vegetable and tofu curries. Some tips if you want to go the extra mile is ask for steamed instead of fried tofu um, or maybe brown rice instead of white. Um, Japanese, this is a great one too. You can get edamame, that's right here, this picture. It's like a baby soybean. And you can also get vegetable rolls. This is my favorite thing to get at Japanese restaurants. And the most common you'll see is avocado and cucumber, but there's so many different options. You can get carrot, you can get um, asparagus, sweet potato rolls. And sometimes you might not see it there, but if there's a vegetable in another roll, then they have that ingredient and you can always ask them to make it um, and even create your own. Say, oh, I'm, I'm looking for avocado, asparagus, carrot rolls. And if they have that, those ingredients, they'll be able to make it for you. You could also give the seaweed salads a try. All right, Indian, um, this is one of my favorite places to go. Um, so one thing is that sometimes these meals have dairy in them without you noticing. It might be ghee or cream or yogurt. Um, so you wanna ask to leave that out. But otherwise you can load up on the lentils and the peas. You can get different types of curries, lots of vegetable dishes here, cauliflower, eggplant, potatoes, spinach, other vegetables. And they're seasoned so beautifully. Um, really, you don't need any meat to enjoy these flavors. And have these lentils or curry or vegetables with maybe some rice, like a vegetable biryani or some roti or dosa. 
And I also have here Italian. So this is an easy one to do. You can always get a big salad, um, leave the cheese off, and just make sure the dressing is vegan. Um, and if you don't see you know, a vegan dressing, you can always ask or just use a little bit of um, lemon juice to squeeze on top. You can get pasta with marinara sauce and tons of veggies like broccoli, minestrone soups. That is generally vegan and very common at Italian restaurants. You can get a side of grilled asparagus or mushrooms, have some bread, and maybe you'll even see a vegetable pizza that you can order without cheese. So really the options are endless. Um, try it out. Maybe that can be your challenge for this week is to try um, you know, eating out vegan. And I'm telling you, once you get the hang of it, you'll probably be able to walk into a restaurant you've never even been in before and figure out something to eat. Um, it just takes a little bit of practice. So I'm here in Maryland, but I know we have people from all over the world. Let me know in the chat, what other places or types of cuisine um, do you enjoy or wanna try a vegan meal at? Let us know in the chat box. And I wanted to leave you with, sorry, Josh, <laughs> A few tips I want to share before I leave. Um, when you're on the lookout for a place to eat, think international cuisine, like the ones I shared, Mexican, Chinese, Italian. If it's a chain restaurant, look on the website ahead of time, right? If it's a big enough restaurant, they're actually, I think, required to either post the ingredients or nutrition facts online. Um, so you can always check there ahead of time. And if you find yourself at a restaurant and you don't see anything on the menu, first thing you can do is ask the waiter, let them know, you know, I'm plant-based or I'm trying to eat healthy, what options do you have? And another idea is to look beyond the set menu. So this could mean um, maybe veganizing a menu option, like holding the cheese, holding the cream, subbing chicken for tofu or beans, something like that. But it could also be creating your own meal out of sides that you see on the menu. Maybe a baked potato with, you know, a salad and some vegetables, right? And if you're going out with friends and family and you're not sure where you're going or if there'll be a lot of food for you to eat, um, you can always eat ahead. That way you're full. And when you get there, um, you can have something light. Like you can always order a drink and a salad most places. And um, if you're on the road, Try to pack some easy snacks like fruits and veggies or brown rice cakes. And my last favorite tip is if you have a packaged meal that might just need hot water, like a convenience food, um, bring it with you on the road. Because if you can go to a drive through any place that sells you know, coffee or hot tea, you can always order a cup of hot water um, free with your meal and then use that to make your instant, you know, split pea soup or your instant rice noodle soup, or maybe it's um, the instant oatmeal cups, right? And then bonus, if you can order a good baked potato or a side salad to go with it. Okay, so I hope that was helpful and gave everyone some really great ideas. Um, thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. Um, that was really helpful. We've had some people saying this is really fantastic advice. Um, so thank you so much. Um, and we've had quite a few people mentioning um, the app and the website Happy Cow. Um, that's one that I've used quite a lot all over the world. Have you used it before, Jennifer? Yes. And, you know, I had the logo on one of my slides and I forgot to mention it. Um, that's a great website. It's a free website. I think you have to pay if you get the app on your phone, but you can always check online. Um, just type in the city or state that you're in and it'll show you all of the vegan options, any place that has vegetarian. And it doesn't have to be an all you know, plant-based restaurant. It'll show anything as long as it has a few options. So really great yeah. tool. That's the thing because most people have friends or family who, who aren't vegan so it's really helpful that they can go mm -hmm. to a, a mainstream place and, and still be catered for and still right. be able to socialize 
Um, we've uh, had some recommendations for Wagamama in the UK. I can agree that they do some delicious recipes. Over half of their menu is, is now vegan. Uh, and, and Leon and uh, Pizza Express are very good in the UK as well. Um, people are uh, saying they're very keen on Ethiopian food and mm -hmm. Indian food. Um, I've, I've yet to try it, but I hear the Ethiopian food is particularly good in, in DC. It is, it is. Um, Lots so, of options there. Yeah, definitely. So so thank you so much, Jennifer. And um, of course. you're going to join us again later for the panel. Is yes, right? yes. Yeah. I will Fantastic. see you soon. <laughs> see you then. Thank you. Okay, so uh, now we're going to be uh, moving on to um, Karen Smith, who will be joining us again um, for the third time. Very lucky to have you back, Karen. She is the uh, registered dietitian at the Barnard Medical Centre, and she's going to talk to us uh, today about complete nutrition. Over to yes. you, Karen. Hi, thanks so much, Dr. Colin Moore. Hi, everyone. It's so great to um, be back with all of you again this week. Um, loving all of your comments in the chat box. I was taking some notes of all the meals that you shared that you had this week. I wrote down tofu tikka masala. That sounds amazing and something, you know, I'd love to try myself. So um, I'm really excited to talk to you about um, how to get complete nutrition when eating a plant-based diet. And um, we are going to jump right in. You can um, rest assured that a plant-based diet provides all the nutrition that your body needs. In fact, um, the world's largest organization of health professionals or nutrition professionals, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics states that a plant-based diet is not only nutritionally adequate, it may help prevent and treat certain diseases, and it's appropriate for people of all ages and fitness levels, and even during pregnancy and lactation. So I'm curious what questions about nutrition, you know, while you're eating a plant-based diet, you know, what comes up for you? What questions do you have? And what questions have you been asked when you tell other people that you eat a plant-based diet? So I'm super curious to see. Um, if the question that I hear most often pops up here, um, and that happens to be, where do you get your protein exactly, right? So it's often the first question people ask when you tell them you're eating a plant-based diet, you know, but where do you get your protein? And the easy answer is it's all over your plate. You literally can't get away from it. Um, the better question truly is where don't you get your protein? Okay, because protein is in all whole plant foods, even plant foods that you might not think of as uh, containing protein do. So as an example, even a large baked potato has about seven to eight grams of protein. And often people think of that as carbs. Um, or one cup of cooked quinoa has about eight grams of protein and um, even fruit, even fruits contain protein, about one to two grams of protein uh, per, per fruit. So plant foods also come packaged with just enough protein to meet our body's needs without the saturated fat and cholesterol found in animal foods. Right. And you'll see that, you know, while fruits do contain protein, they have fewer of their calories coming from protein than the other plant based food groups. Um, and all of these wonderful whole plant foods also contain fiber, which there is, you know, absolutely none of in animal foods. So sometimes people ask, but what about complete proteins? And um, that really is not an issue. Here's what's really important to know. Uh, of the ap approximately 20 amino acids that your body uses to build proteins, okay? Amino acids are the building blocks for proteins in our bodies. Only nine of those amino acids are essential, which means they have to come from the foods that we eat. Our body won't synthesize them. The wonderful thing is that all whole plant foods synthesize all nine of those essential amino acids in varying ratios. And in general, Americans are consuming more 
than the recommended dietary allowance for protein, which is calculated using a healthy body weight. So for most women, about 45 to 50 grams of protein a day is adequate. And for men, about 55 to 60 grams is enough. And you don't have to do any special combining of foods to meet your needs. Okay, so just simple plant-based foods that you see here like oatmeal with soy milk and fruits for breakfast, um, a sweet potato with some black beans and veggies and you know an apple even for lunch, and then a dinner with whole wheat pasta and um, you know marinara sauce with maybe some sliced mushrooms and peas. Um, you know, provides about 55 grams of protein for your day. And if you need more than that, um, you can simply adjust, you know, increase the servings of the foods that you're consuming. And this, you know, plan doesn't include any snacks that you might consume during the day. So moving on to calcium, um, it's customary, right, to hear that we have to drink milk or eat dairy products for calcium, and that is simply not true. Um, mama cows get their calcium from the leafy greens they eat, and humans can too. Um, the recommended dietary allowance of calcium for adult men and women is between 1,000 and 1,200 uh, milligrams per day, depending on your age. And the absorption of calcium from leafy greens is twice as good as the absorption of calcium from milk. And those leafy greens come packed full of vitamin K, potassium, and magnesium that are also necessary for bone health. Um, you'll note that Swiss chard and spinach are in a different color and they have asterisks next to them. And that's because while they contain a high amount of calcium, our bodies don't absorb much of it because they also are high in oxalates and that interferes with the absorption of the calcium in them. Uh, beans and lentils are also good sources of calcium on a plant-based diet. So if we go back to that exact same meal plan that I showed earlier for protein, um, the exact same foods with the addition of two cups of cooked kale provide uh, about 1100 milligrams of calcium for the day. So if you need a little bit more, you could simply you know, have a snack with some hummus and veggies or a bean salad, or even add a fresh orange, which contains about 70 milligrams of calcium. And then vitamin B12, um, is absolutely necessary on a plant-based diet. Uh, it's also recommended for everybody over the age of 50, regardless of the type of dietary pattern you follow. And vitamin B12 is produced by bacteria and other one-celled organisms. It's not made by the foods that we eat. And it's essential for the production of red blood cells and to keep our nerves and blood healthy. Um, we only need a small amount, uh, 2.4 micrograms. And when it comes to a supplement, um, 100 micrograms daily or 1,000 micrograms twice a week is recommended for most people. You can always check with your healthcare provider um, for your specific needs. People who have a history of bariatric surgery or who take the medication metformin should also uh, take a vitamin B12 supplement. And lastly, vitamin D, which isn't actually a vitamin at all, it's a pro-hormone um, that's meant to be made with exposure to sunlight. Um, our bodies will just make vitamin D with sunlight exposure. And there aren't many foods rich in vitamin D in their natural states. There are some foods that are fortified with vitamin D. And just 10 minutes a day um, you know, with, with bare arms um, in, in the sunlight, um, allows our bodies to produce about 10,000 IUs of vitamin D. Um, you know, if you compare that to about 100 IUs of vitamin D, you might find in a fortified beverage, your body is able to produce much more with that sunlight exposure. And um, there is an upper limit of vitamin D cons consumption that's considered safe. That upper limit is 4,000 IUs a day. However, there's no toxic level of vitamin D that can be received from sunlight. Um, so that cutaneous vitamin D production 
varies. It's decreased or blocked by sunscreen use, by the time of day, the season, the latitude where you live, air pollution, uh, skin pigmentation, and even age. And uh, your healthcare can, provider can, can definitely work with you to help you um, figure out if a supplement um, would be helpful for you. And if so, what dose um, to take. So that is, you know, plant-based nutrition in a nutshell. I hope that's helpful for everyone. Um, and yeah, look forward to seeing everyone back again next week. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Really helpful again. And uh, yeah, I completely relate to the, the frustration when people ask you about your protein. And uh, like you say, most people eat too much protein and yet um, nine out of 10 people don't eat enough fiber. So um, that's really the, the nutrient deficiency we, we need to be worrying about. Um, and yeah, we've got some, some questions about protein and, and being an athlete, but we, we do have a, a special class um, on, on, on athletics and um, fitness coming up. So we'll discuss that in a bit more detail then. Um, but yeah, so thank you so much, Karen. You're welcome. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Okay, and then uh, now I would love to introduce Dr. Hannah Kaliova. Um, Dr. Kaliova uh, is the Director of Research um, at the Physicians Committee and uh, she um, would, is, has written many, many papers uh, and is an author um, and she's going to tell us today um, about uh, boosting your metabolism. So over to you, Dr. Kaliova. Thank you so much for your kind introduction, Josh. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, let me share my screen with you so that I can share some slides. Okay, can you see my slides okay? Wonderful. Uh, so I'm excited about tackling one of the most, most practical issues. Which foods should we be eating that would boost our metabolism? Uh, does anyone have the experience that you, when you were in, in your 20s, you were able to eat anything you wanted without gaining weight? Um, but only a few years later, you seem to be gaining weight from just breathing air. <laughs> and that struggle is real for many people. Uh, unfortunately, excuses do not burn any calories. That's right. I wish they did, but they don't. So we better look at the science. Um, we know that when we're talking about metabolism and weight management, it's about energy balance, about a balance between energy intake and energy expenditure. And uh, many of the interventions only focus on the energy intake. They limit whatever calories uh, you're eating, um, but they don't really uh, affect the energy expenditure. And we're talking about physical activity as one way how to increase en energy expenditure. But does what you eat actually affect how, how much energy you're, you're using? Um, when we take our energy expenditure on a, on a regular day, then 70% would be due to basal metabolic rate, 20% due to physical activity, and 10% due to the so-called thermic effect of food. When we eat our, our meals, this is breakfast, lunch, and dinner, we can see an increase in energy output, which is called the thermic effect of food. Uh, that's uh, the release of energy in the form of heat when, it, when we eat a meal. Uh, especially now in the winter time, we know that when, when we eat a meal, we warm up. That's because of the thermic effect of food. And, uh, you know, wouldn't that be wonderful to just eat anything you wanted and uh, uh, to release the extra energy in the form of heat? 
and just, you know, burn all the extra calories? Well, hold that thought. <laughs> uh, the problem um, that we're facing is that when people start gaining weight, uh, instead of burning more calories after a meal, they're actually burning less for some reason. So when people have extra weight, uh, when they're in the obese category, that means body mass index above 30 uh, compared with lean people, um, they burn less calories after meal intake. Uh, they, their thermic effect of food is lower, um, both in absolute and in relative terms. So for lean people, uh, in this particular study, the thermic effect of food uh, was making 15% of all the energy that people were burning on a day. Uh, but in these uh, people who were overweight, it was only 9%. Uh, why is that? Is it because of the extra fat or is it because of the insulin resistance? Is it because the cells are not responding to insulin and this is causing metabolic disturbances? Well, that's a great question. Uh, and one of, one of the studies that has been published a, a few decades ago actually was trying to tease out uh, ex you know, particularly this question. And the study found out that it's actually both. It's both the insulin resistance, but it's also the extra fat um, that people uh, who are overweight have. Now, when we're talking about extra fat, uh, not all fat cells are created e equal. And you know, when we're talking about our belly fat, that's white fat. Uh, and uh, these are um, pictures from the microscope. And we can see that on the far right, there's the so-called brown fat, which is completely different from the white fat. It's all pink. Um, that's because it is full of mitochondria um, because brown fat is super metabolically active. And instead of just storing, uh, storing energy in the form of fat, it's actually burning energy. It's releasing energy. And the good news is that there's also something in between the so-called beige fat, that's something in between white and brown. And you can actually train your white fat cells to become beige. Uh, now, brown, brown fat is found in newborns uh, and helps them with thermogenesis, but it's also found in, in us as adults. Uh, it's especially present around the neck area and around the spine. Uh, and uh, due to an uncoupling protein, um, it's releasing the extra energy in the form of heat. So, you know, if in other words, if we were able to just activate this brown fat, we would be just burning the extra energy and release it in the, in the form of heat. So are there any fat, are, are there any foods that would activate the brown fat? And the answer is yes, actually there are. Uh, first of all, hot peppers, uh, they stimulate brown fat, also jalapeno peppers. Um, but if you don't like spicy foods, I have some good news for you because it's also L-arginine, uh, one of the amino acids that's, that's, that's found in soy foods and beans and nuts and seeds. Uh, so it's a, a variety of plant foods that is able to activate brown fat. Now, uh, when you think about the thermic effect of food over the course of 24 hours, when you look at the meals, then you're probably wondering, well, so what should I have tomorrow for breakfast that would just uh, you know, stimulate my, my metabolism, that would boost my metabolism and I would burn more calories? Uh, and I'm glad you asked. Uh, if you eat uh, your breakfast, please remember to keep it low in fat because if it's low fat, uh, you will burn more calories after the meal compared with a high fat meal. The difference between the meals can be 32% if the high fat meal is, uh, fat is 70% of energy and the low fat meal has fat as 20% of energy. So that's a big difference. 
Uh, so a large proportion of this can be achieved by just keeping your meals low fat. Uh, another important aspect to keep in mind is the fat composition. Uh, while saturated fat that's found especially in animal foods um, such as dairy and meat uh, and eggs, um, saturated fat has a lower thermic effect of food compared with polyunsaturated or monounsaturated fat that's found mainly in plant foods. Uh, so be sure to keep your, your meals low in fat uh, but also pay attention to the quality of fat and eat uh, plant sources of fat, such as, um, such as fruits and vegetables and whole grains and legumes and nuts and seeds. And another important aspect is um, food processing or how whole the foods that you're consuming are. So if you uh, consume a whole grain bread, then the, th the thermic effect of food will be higher compared with white bread. Uh, and if we combine all these aspects together, we know that a plant-based diet um, is typically, um, it typically combines all of these aspects together. It's low in fat, uh, very low in saturated fat, and favors the consumption of unprocessed foods. So could a plant-based diet make any difference in the thermic effect of food if you, if you go vegan? Uh, and the answer is yes. Uh, Dr. Barnard was the first one to show in 2005 um, that when people go vegan, uh, the thermic effect of food uh, can go up uh, 16%. That means that they can they can burn 16% more calories, uh, and um, we were conducting a study a few years ago where we were looking exactly at this question: uh, what happens when when people go vegan? Uh, so we compared a low-fat vegan diet where people were um, consuming fruits and grains and legumes and vegetables uh, with a standard American diet for 16 weeks. We measured the metabolism using the indirect calorie metry, uh, which is a machine that looks like a spaceship. Uh, the participants were coming into to the lab in the morning and uh, we just placed this clear hood over their head. They were breathing normally and based on the carbon dioxide output, we were able to calculate how many calories they're burning. Uh, and we were also sending the study participants to Yale University uh, to have the uh, magnetic resonance spectroscopy of the liver and muscle to measure the fat content in the liver and muscle. And the, the outcomes were just outstanding. Uh, people lost about 14 pounds on average over the course of 16 weeks on the vegan diet. Uh, their liver fat dropped by 34%, which is just astounding because there is no specific treatment for fatty liver disease. So if you can reduce your fatty liver uh, content by 34%, that's just incredible. Uh, insulin resistance also dropped, you know, make, suggesting that the metabolism improved and which may imply um, that maybe the thermic effect of food may, may have also improved. And so uh, to confirm it with the measurement, uh, the thermic effect of food did not change at all in the control group, but it increased by 14% uh, in the vegan group. So a plant-based diet really uh, boosts your metabolism. Uh, and just to summarize what's, what's essential, a plant-based diet that emphasizes low-fat foods, such as fruits and vegetables and grains and legumes, reduces caloric intake, but also increases the thermic effect of food. That means increases your energy expenditure and thereby boosts your metabolism. So if we practice this vital information, um, we can all optimize our diet to boost metabolism and win. Thank you for your attention. And I'll be happy to take some questions. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Kaliova. Um, some great feedback here.
fantastic information. Uh, someone was in that study that you were talking about and said they've been off their statins ever since. Um, so yeah, fascinating, fascinating research. So thank you so much for telling us about that. Um, and now um, on to our panel discussion. Um, Dr. Kaliova, I think you're going to be joining us for that as well. So that's great. Thank you. Um, we have some other guests joining us. Um, so just to introduce you, we have um, Willie Jonas uh, coming back again from last week. Uh, it's a pleasure to have Willie back. He is a passionate health advocate uh, and plant-based advocate who is studying medicine in Indonesia and has interned with the Physicians Committee. Uh, we have uh, Bola Adiyanju. She is the founder and executive director at Veggie Victory, the first vegan restaurant in Nigeria, and V Chunks, the first uh, plant-based meat alternative in the country. Uh, we also have Dr. Leila Degan, who is the education lead uh, for Plant-Based Health Professionals UK, and is a medical doctor, reg registered nutritionist, personal trainer, martial artist, public speaker, and author. Um, so thank you so much to all of you for joining us. Um, uh, we have such a, an international panel. This is, this is fantastic. So I would love to um, ask a bit more about uh, your favourite dishes, any particularly local um, dishes to your, to your area, to your country of origin, uh, and, and how you eat out when you go to restaurants. I'd love to start, um, Willie, you, you were with us last week and said that you would share the recipe for your um, tempeh uh, cookies, was it? Yes, that's right. I have promised to share tempeh cookies recipe since tempeh is from Indonesia. So I, I would love to share the, the recipe with you all. And so this is the tempeh cookies, how it looks like. This is how I make it. I think um, this is all the ingredients. Uh, we, we have to mix the, the tempeh with the raw oats uh, just to make it more stick and, and bind together. Uh, but we use flaxseed, a handful of cashews, uh, just be mindful with, with nuts, and then a little bit of soy milk. You can use chocolate powder or carrot powder, and also a little bit of uh, palm sugar. Uh, just a little bit. Uh, I, I don't make it that sweet. Um, so yeah, be mindful with sugar. Uh, this is all the steps you, you need to do. But what is important is uh, you, you want to cut the tempeh into smaller pieces like this. And then you bake it until it, it really dry. Uh, so you, until it dries up. And then you blend all the, the dry ingredients all together into like this. Um, and then you mix uh, the chocolate powder and, and the rest of the ingredients. And then you, you flatten it. And then you can shape it into the shape that you like to. And then you can bake it. Um, so this is the key. Uh, you cut the temper in smaller pieces. And then you bake it. and, and dry it up um, and then some other recipe from indonesia uh, it's called gado gado it's it's super easy it's ba basically steamed vegetable with with peanut sauce uh, and this is how you make the 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 peanut sauce here you, you only need water we don't use any oil um, and then you can use peanuts a little bit of almond and then garlic chili lime leaves lime leaves is is very key to to give like kind of like a, a, a kind of like a lemon lemony taste uh, and then a little bit of salt a little bit of palm sugar um, and then tamarind tamarind is a very important part also to this recipe so when you are lazy this is a very very super simple recipe you just steam all the, the veggies and then give a peanut sauce uh, and this is very indonesian recipe and then uh the, the last one is tempeh and tofu balado. So probably if you've been eating tofu and tempeh and you're wondering how can I make a different taste to tofu, my tofu and tempeh. And this is uh, another thing that you can do. This is all the ingredients. Uh, galangal is, is very important. You probably might have to go to like Asian market to find galangal. And then ginger, you need lemongrass. Uh, probably those are the unique uh, ingredients that you need and then you can you can watch all the steps how to make it uh, in the 
YouTube link the, in the video here. So you can try uh, tofu and tempe balado to cook tofu and tempe in an Indonesian way. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Willie. I'm definitely going to try those. They look, they look delicious. Um, thank you. And um, we've had someone saying they're here from um, Nigeria, which is which is fantastic. So uh, Chef Bola, uh, as I mentioned, you, you started the first vegan restaurant in Nigeria. That's amazing. Um, tell us um, what's, what are your favorite, favorite recipes to, to cook in the restaurant? Uh, OK, yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for having me here. Um, it depends. I think uh, it changes with time. But right now, I'm at this space where I love my egusi soup. Anything egusi. Um, if you asked me six months ago, I'll tell you, oh, I, was, I substitute the uh, tofu with egusi. But right now, egusi is the like life of the party for me. So always What's, ready What is me. that, sorry? Egusi soup is the life of a party to me right now. So and, and what I enjoy is having egusi. So egusi is a melon seed. Um, and it's a very, very popular dish in West Africa, to be precise. And it's like a, a common soup in Nigeria. So we, either you're from the West, the South and everything, everybody knows a goosey soup. And it's very healthy. So, and it can be paired with any side dishes. So it's, it's really, really fantastic. And it's like, if you uh, prepare it traditionally, it's vegan. So you don't need to, there's no need for adding extra animal protein in, into it. So egusi is, is a very good dish. Yeah, that sounds delicious. And so um, your, your restaurant's in Lagos, is that right? Yes, we are in Lagos, uh, Nigeria. Um, with, the, with the product V-Chunks, so we're planning to uh, take the all the restaurant, like we're going around and giving people options to include plant-based options on their menu because it's, a, it's always like a very difficult to get uh, plant-based meat at restaurants so oh fantastic so it's going down well congratulations yeah so far so good it, it is <laughs> fantastic um does anyone else have any particular favorite recipes they'd like to share because we've got such a great international panel here um, Jennifer, you're American, but also Caribbean. Uh, Hannah, um, uh, Dr. Kelly, over, you're from the Czech Republic originally, and um, and Leila, you're in the UK, but from I Iran originally. So yeah, we've got a fantastic spread. Any any particular favourite recipes? Let's yeah, I'd like to I'd like to share a recipe that you can prepare wh while you're sleeping. <laughs> it's one of my most favourites, and it's a it's a traditional Czech recipe uh, in the Czech Republic and in Europe in general. Uh, split peas and lentils are used a lot, you know, in, dif in different recipes. So uh, one of my favorites is a yellow split pea soup that you can prepare in your crock pot while you're sleeping overnight. <laughs> so you just take one pound of split peas. Um, put it in four pounds of water in your crock pot, put it on low and cook it overnight. And when you come back in the morning, uh, it'll be uh, pretty much ready. Uh, and you can only add salt, nutritional yeast, garlic and marjoram. Uh, and that's it. If you'd like to add some more veggies and cook it for another hour or so, so that the veggies get soft, that's another option, but that's optional. Basically, you can really prepare your soup uh, while you're sleeping and can have it ready in the morning. Sounds fantastic for, for busy people. Uh, and I went to Prague um, a couple of years ago. The, the vegan options are amazing, actually. I was, I was surprised how, how fantastic they are. Is that, um, is that just, just Prague or is it easy to get vegan options in, in the rest of the Czech Republic? It's not only Prague. The vegan options are just like spreading like wildfire. You know, the vegan restaurants are starting. There's so many places where to eat vegan. And even if the restaurants are not uh, vegan per se, most of them do offer vegan options. So it's so easy to eat vegan in the Czech Republic in general. Oh, fantastic. And uh, um, Willie, you're nodding. Is it, uh, is it similar in, in uh, Indonesia now? Is it, are there good options? Yeah, actually becoming vegan in Indonesia is super, super easy. Like there's 
too many options especially i mean in the city it's it's super easy you can find japanese restaurant you can find indian restaurant but even in in the rural area basically indonesia is more mostly our plant-centric diet we, we adopt a plant-centric diet so all over the place you can find vegan food it's very easy so if you come to indonesia josh it will be easy for you <laughs> oh fantastic i might take you up on the offer thank you and um uh dr dagan uh any particular favorite recipes from from iran or, or yes anywhere? i mean Iran, I mean, uh, Willie was saying that, you know, uh, the cuisine in Indonesia is actually plant-centric. And when it comes to Iran, actually, the cuisine is very meat-heavy. So, uh, but what I like about it is that most dishes, they, it already contains some sort of like, you know, beans, lentils. So by removing the meat, you veganize it, you make it plant-based, very easy. And my favorite actually dish is, everybody was talking about soup, mine is also a soup. But it is a very thick soup, so it has um, uh, like uh, lentils, it has chickpeas, the kidney beans, and it has uh, spinach, onions, garlic, and a lot of herbs like parsley, uh, basil, dill. So it's really kind of a lot of flavor and nutrition is balanced really. And it is very thick and uh, uh, yeah, full of flavor, easy to make. It takes some time. The cooking time is long, but it's actually very easy to make. And I usually like, actually, especially in winter, you know, like now when it is cold, I make a big pot at the weekend so I can have it, you know, a small bowl every day. So really nice. Fantastic. And how about um, when you're eating out in restaurants, um, either in a, Iran or the UK, how, how do you find that? Well, I haven't been to Iran for ages, so I don't know how it is, but I know there, there are a lot of vegans in Iran, so their movement is growing. And But here in the UK, what I do is just I ask for a, a vegetarian option. And by just, as I said, removing the you know meat, it is, it is plant-based, it is vegan. So there is no problem at all. So it's very easy actually to eat a vegan in an, in an, in an Iranian restaurant here. So not a problem at all. Fantastic. Um, shame you're not in uh, Nigeria you could could get some of uh, Chef Bola's bee <laughs> chunks you, you don't uh, ship them internationally do you yet Bola oh you're, you're on mute if you are if you're in the UK then you can get on eBay and very soon we are going on um, Amazon so oh fantastic can, oh great and we ship worldwide as well amazing definitely going to try those and um, Jennifer, how about any ideas from Caribbean cuisine? Sure, yeah. Going to Caribbean restaurants is, is one of my favorites. Um, you can usually get vegetable curries, um, like potato curry and spinach. My favorite is curried pumpkin. Um, so give that a try if you have a restaurant near you. Um, you can get plantains and seasoned rice. And then they have um, roti, which you usually fill with um, chickpeas and potatoes. It's another great option. Um, one of my favorite recipes is chana um, made from, so I do a Trinidad version. It's like a curried chickpea. And what you do is you take green seasoning, which is blended up herbs and onions and garlic and cilantro and celery. And you heat it on the pan with a little bit of curry powder and veggie broth, and then you add your chickpeas. And it's a really, really simple, great meal. Oh, that sounds, that sounds really good. Thank you. Uh, someone's just agreeing that uh, a goosey soup is delicious. So um, top marks for that one. Um, and yeah, any, any other tips? Um, how about, Willie, yeah, eating, eating out in, uh, in Indonesia. Any, any tips eating out in restaurants, plant-based? basically not being afraid to ask to veganize a, 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 a menu because Indonesia are in Indonesian people are now more familiar with vegan vegan diet uh, so wherever I go I, I don't have any problem but probably there are a lot of other I guess temptations uh, that you you have because when some people might used to eat meat when they were little and so they have some memory for for the the meat uh, options but by veganizing it we can definitely make the food still taste really good and in indonesia there are a lot of food stalls 
um and so wherever we go like even even the the dessert indonesian desserts they are actually vegan so so it's it's super easy to 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 find vegan foods in indonesia great so it's really just a, a matter of, of asking exactly fantastic Okay, oh, thank you so much, everyone. Um, we're coming to the end of our time, unfortunately, but we, we really appreciate you joining us today, all of you. Um, so thank you again. I know some of you will be, will be joining us again uh, in the coming weeks. Um, so I'm just going to share a couple of slides. Um, first of all, just to show um, our, our participants um, how to get in touch um, with you all. Um, let me just find this. Okay, so um, yeah, if anyone wants to, to contact any of our panelists, um, please do um, check out the social media and websites. Um, for Bola, she's on Instagram and Twitter, Veggie Victory NG and Bola's Plant Kitchen and the website veggievictory.com. Uh, Willie is mostly on Instagram, Willie Jonas. And uh, Dr. Leila Dagan is on Facebook uh, and Instagram, Plant Powered Q, uh, Key sorry, Nutrition, uh, and her website is drlaylad.com. And then just a shout out to our organisational um, promoting partners. Um, thank you so much for, for spreading the word about this programme. Uh, we've got Plant Based Health Professionals UK. Um, we have a French organization, uh, APSARES, the International Vegetarian Union, Vegan First, Black Veg Society, Doctors for Nutrition from Australia, SWITCH, Freedom from Diabetes, and Crack the Wellness Code. So thank you again to, to uh, all of our organizational uh, partners. And so we hope this has been useful. Thank you so much for all of your comments today. And um, we really hope to see you again next week for class four, third, Thursday, the 3rd of February at 4 p.m. US uh, Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. in the UK or 8 a.m. in Melbourne. And uh, next week we'll be joined again uh, by Dr. Neil Barnard, who will talk about how to reverse type two diabetes. We'll have some really fantastic, fantastic cooking demos. We'll be welcoming back uh, Chef Bola Adeyanju uh, and Dustin Harder, uh, who works for the Physician Committee, he is the vegan roadie, and Sarah Bentley from Made in Hackney. They'll all be showing us um, some fantastic recipes. And uh, doctors uh, Helene Rooks and Juliet Rooks uh, will be uh, talking about foods for healthy children and teens. So thank you again from, from all of us, from all of the panellists and guests. Thank you so much uh, for joining us all over the world. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.